Welcome to Business Casual, the weekly podcast from Morning Brew, answering the biggest questions in business. I'm your host and brew business editor, Kinsey Grant. And now, let's get into it. So it's my job to curate the themes that I think are going to define the season in business news as part of this podcast. And time and again, one of the major trends that's come up in my brainstorming sessions is giving back. I think now more than ever in recent memory, consumers are making decisions based on their perceived inherent goodness or badness of a company. In fact, the other day I was at the doctor and she told me she pulled her money out of a bank account she'd had for years because that bank's investing arm had money in fossil fuels, an investment she personally was vehemently against. And we see this happen all the time, most recently with JP Morgan deciding to go green with its own investments. Now, that might be a bit of an extreme example, but it illustrates the point well. Consumers have a choice. So how are businesses operating in this new kind of woke landscape? Today, I'm talking with Bombas co-founder and CEO, David Heath, to figure it out. David, thank you for coming to Business Casual. Welcome on the show. Thank you for having me. Excited yeah, to be here. I, I'm really excited to talk, and I, I feel like I have to get it off my chest before we even get into this. Okay. I am wearing Bomba socks right now. Amazing. Never know when like the shoes are going to come yeah. off, right? But awesome. I'm a big fan. I love your socks. Thank They're you great. for supporting us. Super comfortable. Um, but for those of you who don't know, Bomba started by selling these socks that I am ranting and raving about. Um, you guys moved into shirts as well. Uh, but the premise is basically that for every item that people purchase, you guys give something back. Correct. Awesome. Um, and you're a certified B Corp, which is a, a big deal when it comes to the kind of give back uh, business model. It's basically the holy grail for companies that are trying to do good. And I want to focus on that certification process and your strategy of giving back um, today. But quickly, before we kind of get into all of the, the nitty gritty of B Corp, et cetera, how many socks have you guys sold? Do you know at this point? Well, yeah. So we obviously we track donations. Um, and so because for every sock that we sell, we donate a pair of socks. Um, I started the company because I learned that socks were the number one most requested clothing item at homeless shelters. Um, and so to date, I think we've donated over 35 million pairs of socks. So you when you donate these socks, are they Bomba socks that you donate or are they just generic? Yeah, socks? great, great question. Um, so when we started the company, uh, we donated the exact same sock that we sold. Uh -huh. All right, my thought was I want the people in the homeless community to experience the same comfort and joy that our customers are experiencing. Um, after six months of donating socks, what we quickly learned actually was that the needs of the people who are living on the street are quite different from those of our customers, which... It may sound obvious, but, you know, mm -hmm. when you think about it at first, we're just trying to do the same thing. Um, and so we then spent six months with working with our charity partners um, to donate uh, or to design a specific donation sock. Um, these socks are the same core construction of our Bomba socks, but they are treated with an antimicrobial treatment to help prevent the growth of fungus and, and odor. Um, they have reinforced seams so that they last longer, uh, and they utilize darker colors to help show and minimize visible wear. Okay. Um, so now we have a designated donation sock, and we have a you know we started selling T-shirts last year. We have a designated donation T-shirt and similar you know similar properties to that. So we design for the homeless community you know, differently than we design for um, our customers because they're two yeah. different, you know, right. customer segments. Right. That they, we there think are of them as customers. Different needs, yeah. exactly. So it seems like a big part of your mind share is going to this giving back portion of your business. It's in the DNA of everything that we do. So part of what we were talk to, talking about earlier when I was introducing you is this idea that Bombas is a B Corp. Yeah. Uh, this has been a trend that we've hit on a couple times in Business Casual, but one that I'm really interested to kind of dive a lot deeper into. Yeah. Explain to me in the simplest terms possible what it means to be a B Corp. Yeah, so a B Corp, it, well, first of all, the B stands for benefit. Um, so you are designated as a benefit corporation. Um, there's two different... Um, I guess like uh, considerations for it. One is a set, of, it's a certification process, and then one is actually now a filing process from a tax purpose. So we are B Corp certified, but we still file as a C Corp. Um, you'd have to ask my accounting team what the differences yeah. <laughs> are from an accounting perspective, but essentially, you know, why we became a B Corp. Um, not only obviously for the outward recognition to customers that you know we're a company that stands to benefit society beyond just capitalism, um, it is an incredibly extensive process by which it's not just saying like oh we donate socks so now we're stamped B Corp right. It is you have to basically uh, go through this process and certify that in a 
X number of areas or you have to tally points in order to get certified, but it goes from everything from like what your maternity policy, your maternity paternity policy is, what is your sick policy, what is, you know, your, the way that you are committed to diversity and inclusion, what is the way in which, you know, you're giving back, you know, product or percentage of donations uh, or dollars to, you know, causes in your local community. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of qualifications. There's sustainability ones. There's so many sub compartments of you know so, so you can't just do one thing really well and then be like dumping you know toxins into the ocean right yeah. like you have to like qualify kind of a minimum bar across all areas of your business where you are committed to saying we are going to do the best thing possible not only for our people for our customers for the planet and for the community yeah and that's something i didn't honestly myself didn't know was part of B yeah. Corp certification, that there is this scale and there are points that you tally up across a variety of things, like you mentioned. Um, I was, you know, researching how you guys got B Corp certified. Uh, I found that, I guess the scale is out of like 200, right? Yep. That zero is the worst company ever. 200 is ostensibly the best company yeah. in the world that doesn't exist. Yeah. Uh, the, a 50 something is like the average company. Yeah. But to get B Corp, you have to be 80, I believe. Exactly. That's crazy that like yeah. the average company is nowhere near what B Corp certified means. Yeah. And I mean, it, you know, it, it's, it's a lot because look, there are, because we're, we're, you know, we're in, we're, we're in a capitalistic society, right? So, you know, I tell people like very transparently, like I would have loved from day one to not have any plastic in my supply chain, be carbon neutral, donate product to the homeless community, you know, make, you know, I want, you know, the, all of these benefits and, um, you know, commitments to social good require dollars typically, right? They're expensive, right? To go green or to, you know, donate a pair of socks, like these things cost money. And so business, you know, not every business has, you know, can, can be so successful that they can dedicate all of their profits and resources to, especially if you're growing, right? Because you want to have cash on the balance. There are actual financial considerations you need to have before you just say like, I'm going to go commit to do this stuff. These things take time, but it's amazing that we're living in a time of consumerism where consumerism is meeting consciousness, right? And we're trying, and businesses are being rewarded, and the expectation of customers is higher that profits aren't just enough, right? As shareholders, like the the non-financial shareholders, the customers or the people in the community or on the planet want more from the, and expect more from these companies. Otherwise, they're gonna vote with their dollars and go somewhere else, exactly. as you mentioned earlier in the introduction. Yeah. When in the lifetime of Bombas as a company did you hit B Corp certification? I think we're three years in and probably around, I don't know, 20, 25 employees, something like that. What do you think the the everyday consumer thinks of a company when they see B Corp certified? I still think we're in a big educational stage of it. Um, I would probably, I mean, I'm sure there's research out there, um, but I would guess that a very small percentage of customers understand, you know, what a B Corp is, or maybe they've got some idea like, oh, that's that thing that I guess tells us it's a good company, but like by what measure? Like, again, I mean, as a journalist, you didn't realize until you started digging into it, there's a 200 yeah. point scale and, yeah. you know, even 50, you know, zero is the worst, average is 50 and 80 is considered good, right? Like, I don't think that, you know, the consumer doesn't know that. Uh, and they certainly don't know to what extent does the P Corp have to be pervasive through the entire organization. But, you know, it's still relatively new. I think it's what, probably less than 10 years old. Mm -hmm. um, um, so I think it'll take time. But again, that's not that's not a reason to do it or not to do it, right? We chose to do it because it's the right thing. And we want it to be a symbol. And we want to be able to say, like, yeah, we were early adopters of this before. Like, we don't do these things. We don't donate socks because we think we're going to sell more socks. We get the added benefit of selling more socks because we donate socks, but like that's not why we do it. Right? We don't become a B Corp so that we can like wave a flag around and be like, "Look at how good we are. You should buy our product." Like we do it because it's the right thing to do. And I think when you see companies who like you could the customer understands and they're you know especially in the social media age that we live in, like authenticity rules. Right? People can see through like you know, when a 
help, you know, when a soda company is saying like, you know, get and outside and like, yeah, be more exercise. It's like, well, you know, you have 48 grams of sugar in a 12 ounce bottle of soda. Like, how can you, you're doing that because you feel like you have to do it, right. not because you truly believe it. Because if you did, then you would stop selling these products and you'd start selling water. You know, it's like, yeah. so we do it because it's the right thing to do, not because we think it's going to like have a marketing benefit to us. I imagine there is a little bit of a marketing benefit. Though. Like people sure. love to virtue signal. You know, yeah. like people love to the to post on Facebook, "Hey, I bought these socks," and then a homeless person got a pair of socks. Like that makes yeah. them feel good. It sure. makes other people think that they're so, also good. Surprisingly, though, we did a customer survey recently, and only sixty percent of our customers know that we have a mission. Really? Yeah. Do you like, wish that that were a bigger number? Of course, yeah. I mean, I, I, I mean, not because I want credit for it, but because like I want them to know that their purchases are impacting, you know, having a greater impact. Um, you, like you're never going to be a hundred percent, right? Like somebody's going to pick them off the shelf and never going to know, and you know, somebody was going to watch a four minute video about our, you know, how we give back. So, you know, I think hopefully over time, again, that's why you have to like. You know, we don't, we're not trying to be a flash in the pan. Like, we want to build a company that's going to be around for 100 plus years. So, um, you know, having that long term mindset keeps us focused on not going, oh my God, 40% of our customers don't know. Let's start hammering them about our mission. And, like, you know, you got to, like, you know, these things take time and be pragmatic and practical about how you approach different problems. I want to talk more about uh, the impact of your give back mission and B Corp status on the business in just a second. But really quickly, let's take a short break to hear from our partner. So I know you love listening to Business Casual, but a lot of the topics we've hit on have veered very heavily toward technology. If you want to learn more about the emerging technologies that are shaping the economy and the business world around us, I cannot recommend enough Morning Brew's Emerging Tech newsletter written by Ryan Duffy, whom I sit right next to in the office. It's a great look at everything from artificial intelligence to augmented reality to driverless cars and all of the new tech that's going to be changing the world we live in in the coming years. Go to morningbrew.com backslash emerging dash tech. 